This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Professor Gil McVean tells us how statistical genetics helps us understand and treat disease. Hello, Gil. Hi there. What is statistical genetics? Statistical genetics is the study of genetic variation. Now, most obviously, that's genetic variation in relation to disease and how we look, how we behave, and so on. But it's also the study of genetic variation in in, a, in the context of how it came about and what it can tell us about very fundamental processes. For example, I've been studying recombination uh, for maybe 10 years now, and we're using genetic variation in natural populations to understand that. We also use genetic variation to understand about history, how people have moved around the globe, what kind of uh, selective forces, what evolutionary pressures have been shaping populations over that time. And how does studying genetic variation help us to understand complex disease? Perhaps easiest to explain that through an example. So we've been working, for example, with a, a group here who are interested in craniosynostosis. It's a, it's a nasty uh, cranial uh, malformation that you get in children. Now, typically, these result from uh, new mutations that occur when a father or mother transmits their genetic material to a child. Now, uh, these are very severe, and of course, that child is very unlikely to go on to uh, survive or reproduce uh, unless there's some st strong treatment. So that's one way in which the disease occurs, but actually, that's by far and away the minority way by which disease happens. Most of the genetic influence on disease comes through inherited mutations. So if you get MS or heart disease or stroke or something like that, the genetic factors that shape that are, are things that you've got from your parents and they got from their ancestors. So these things are common in, in the population often and they have very subtle uh, effects. So what we do in statistical genetics is to look at whole cohorts of people to try and work out which genes are enriched in people that get a particular disease, uh, but they're never, they're very rarely are they sort of definitive, like you have this mutation, you're going to get this disease. So by studying uh, these genetic variations, the sort of things that we hope to be able to do are to identify which genes are involved in disease risk, uh, but perhaps more generally which pathways, which, which ways in which cells function or interact with the environment are much more important. So for example, in uh, multiple cirrhosis, which I've been studying uh, recently, we found that the majority of the genetic variants that uh, lead to an increased risk of MS are associated with the immune system, and in fact, a very particular part of the immune system. Uh, and that opens up new sort of possibilities for trying to understand exactly why you get the disease. And what are the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or 10 years? I think the single most transforming factor in the last five years has been the emergence of genome sequencing, whole genome sequencing, as uh, a technology that we can use routinely in the lab even to try and understand why people get a particular disease. So, uh, for example, in Oxford, we've been sequencing 500 individuals with a whole variety of different clinical disorders, trying to understand how the, which genetic variants they carry are the ones that have increased the risk of uh, getting the disease. Or in some cases, we have very strong mutations, but in other, these are much uh, weaker effects. So I think. It's been a very transforming technology, but what, what we've had to do as a community to get sort of work out how, it, how to use it uh, has been to assemble large sort of international consortia to push the development of both methodologies, uh, but also the collection of large cohorts so that we can study um, complex diseases. And so one of the things I've been doing is helping to run a project called the Thousand Genomes Project, which does kind of what it says on the tin, it's sequencing well, it's actually sequencing about two and a half thousand people uh, for the purpose of trying to understand what genetic variation looks like in the human population so that when we go to a disease population or a cohort, we can, we can sort of work out what they've got that the, the natural population, the normal population, doesn't. So why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Well, I think we, and most people, are, are fairly aware that genomics is a set of technologies that can have a very s powerful influence on understanding disease. So for example, in cancer 
uh, particular mutations that you get in those cancers determine which treatments are likely to be successful or not. Um, you, can, you might have a genetic variation that in influences how you're going to respond to a particular drug, whether you get a bad reaction or a good reaction. Um, those are the sort of, the, that's where genomics is at the moment as a set of technologies, but we think that there's a huge potential for it to go much further so that you know, if you come into the clinic and you've got multiple sclerosis, we might be able to say a lot more on the basis of the genetic variants that you carry about um, the treatment op options. So we think that genomics and genomic technologies are very powerful in science, but to make sense of the data that comes out of them, uh, you need very strong statistical um, methodologies and skills. The data is huge, it's very noisy, it's incredibly complex. And so teasing out signal from that noise is an incredibly difficult problem, and that's why you need statistics in it. And how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? I think the, the strongest case it, that you can make for that is um, the role of genomic technologies and whole genome sequencing in trying to understand particular disorders. So um, gen genome sequencing is already used in things like um, understanding how cancers work. We think it can go much further. And so we're working, Bioinformatics and Statistical Genetics, the group I, I head, is working with the Biomedical Research Centre and other clinicians across Oxford to see what sequencing and, and genome technologies more generally can bring uh, to the clinic. And I think we've had a few successes in that already. I mentioned uh, craniosynostosis. We've actually found mutations uh, in, in now several uh, children where they were previously undiagnosed. And that's actually a really important part of the whole uh, treatment process is identifying uh, the, the cause of mutations. So I think it's very exciting that we're actually already using sequencing in the, in the clinical setting, uh, and I, we hope that it can go much further. Thank you, Gail. Thank you.